Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Well, hello and how are you? I'm very happy because we've been recording some new stories for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our trickster story season. Thank you, Toop. Yes, for the next few weeks we're going to be hearing some trickster stories. Do you know what a trickster story is? Aha! Uh -huh. If you do, can you tell your grown-up so they'll know about trickster stories too? A trickster is a character who is usually clever and they like to break the rules and they often play tricks on people. But their tricks don't always go quite according to their plans. The trickster story we're going to hear today comes from West Africa. It's told by the magnificent storyteller Toop. And this one is dedicated to four-year-old Harvey in Santa Barbara, who loves animals. We've had a few trickster stories on Super Great Kids. I wonder which is your favourite? To jog your memory, we've had one with a rabbit and a sky god. We've had one with a coyote and baby turtle. And we've had one with a donkey and a toad and one with a spider and a drum. Can you try to remember any of those stories and maybe decide which is your favourite while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Hello, super great kids. So, which is your favourite trickster story? Was it Kojo the rabbit? Or Coyote and Baby Turtle? Or the race between donkey and toad? Or was it a Nazi and the drum of common sense? Well, here is Toop telling us a trickster tale about how stories got into the world. Ready? You know, in all parts of the world, they have different ways of introducing a story. If I was to say to you, Crick, could you reply, Crack. Let's go. Crick. Crack. Yes. Here is a story about Anansi, who is a trickster, and Niami, the sky god. You know Anansi is half man and half spider. And you know Anansi is the great-great-grandfather of Incy Wincy Spider. And you know Anansi comes from Africa, West Africa. Well, Anansi one day was thinking to himself, you know something, I've heard that the sky god Nayami has a chest. And in that chest, there are all the stories stories, all the wishes, all the dreams, all the sayings, all the traditions from all over the world. Ah, says Anansi, if I could get that chest, can you imagine what a great storyteller I would become? And Nancy threw his web high up into the sky until a wind took it and drew that gossamer thread high into the heavens. And there was Niami, the sky god. And Nancy scuttled over, saying, Niami, Niami! He said, Niami, the sky god. And Nancy, why you come for see me? Oh, said Nancy. Because I heard that you have a wonderful, magical, beautiful chest. And in this chest, there are all the stories, the dreams, the wishes, the languages from all over the world. 
I, I, Anansi, wish to have this chest. And if I could have this chest, the stories I will share amongst all the people. Hey, said Nyami. This chest is very valuable. I cannot give it to you like that. If you want the chest, you will have to bring me something. What, says Anansi, what is it you would like? Bring me the jaguar. Bring me the jaguar and maybe I will think about it. Anansi threw his web down to the earth, climbed down and went home to see his wife. As he sat there scratching his head, his wife, whose name is Asu, she came to him and said, Anansi, why are you sitting there scratching your head? And Nancy said, because I've been to see the sky god, Nayami. And he said to me that he wants a jaguar. Ay, the jaguar, they bite. How am I going to get a jaguar? What most people don't know is that Asu, and Nancy's wife, she is the one who always gives Anansi the good ideas, for she cooked for him some very nice flavored peppered soup. Anansi drank that soup, and when he drinks his soup, he gets the best ideas. Anansi, he had some ginger bear spiced up, in a calabash bowl. And Nancy, he went out into the forest. He dug a hole. He laid that spicy ginger drink in the calabash down in the base of the hole. Then Nancy, he covered over that hole and went into a bush and waited. What you may not know is that jaguars, they love ginger bear. And that jaguar smelt it and came sniffing close to where that hole was, not realizing it was covered over with twigs and leaves. The jaguar fell down and was in the hole. The jaguar, not being able to climb out, began to drink and drink that ginger drink. And before you know it, the jaguar fell fast asleep at the base of that hole. And Nancy jumped out from his hiding place. He had his large sack. He wrapped up that jaguar into the sack. He threw his gossamer thread up into the heavens. And the wind took it and led Nancy to the realm of the ancestors, Nayami, the sky god. And Nancy said, I have brought for you the jaguar. Nayami, the sky god, stretched out his hands and said, What my hand has touched remains mine. But Nancy, you cannot get the chest just like that. You must bring me something else. What, said Anansi, what now? Bring me the hornet's nest, those that sting like fire. Oh, and Nancy threw down his gossamer thread back down to earth. And once again, he went home and he sat there scratching his head. His wife, Asu, she came to him saying, Anansi, what you doing there scratching your head? And Nancy said, well, I've been to see this guy, God. I gave him what he wanted. He gave me another task. I have to go and get the hornet's nest. And they sting like fire. <laughs> what am I going to do? Asu, she is the one who gives and Nancy, the inspiration for ideas. She cooked him that nice hot pepper soup, and Nancy drank it up, and before you know it, he said to Asu, Asu, I have a plan. Come, get your calabash, fill it with water, and let us make our way out into the forest. They came to a Iroka tree which grew in the forest. And Nancy said, climb, climb into the tree and throw down some of the water from your calabash. Asu climbed up into the tree, above the hornet's nest, which were buzzing around. Zzz, 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 zzz. 
And Nancy, he stood underneath the hornet's nest, looking up at them, he said, Hornets! The monsoon is coming, the rain is falling. At this moment, as Sue, she began to throw down water on top of that hornet's nest. Hey, said Nancy, can't you see? You all will be flooded. Look, I have a calabash. Why don't you come inside of my calabash and keep warm? The hornet nest. It began to get wet and saturated with water. And before you know it, one hornet went into the calabash. Then another. Then another. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. And before you know it, all of the hornets that sting like fire, they were all in the calabash. And Nancy put the lid on the calabash. And they could not get out. And Nancy threw his gossamer thread up into the heavens. The wind caught it and pulled Nancy up, up into the realm of the ancestors where Nayami sat. And Nancy said, I've brought what you requested. In this calabash is hornets. Nayami stretched forth his hands and said, what my hand has touched remains mine. But Anansi, you cannot get the chest that easily. Ah, oh, said Anansi, you're playing with me. You're playing with me now. Come on. Give me the thing of which I ask. I've brought you what you requested. But the sky god said, Anansi, last task, if you can bring for me the forest spirit, the one you cannot see, then maybe I will consider giving you the chest of stories. With that, Anansi threw down his gossamer thread towards the earth. He descended, and when he reached home, he sat there, and he was scratching his head. Exactly, and before you know it, his wife, Asu, came and asked, Anansi, what you doing there scratching your head? And Anansi said, oh, if you could only believe the problems I have with Nayami. He says, I have to find a forest spirit. And you cannot see one. You cannot smell one. How are you going to know a forest spirit is there? Well, you know Asu. She is the one who gives Anansi all of his best ideas, and she knows how to get to Anansi's mind, and she cooked for him the hot, peppered soup. Exactly, and before you know it, Anansi drank up his soup, and he knew what to do. And Nancy got some reeds that grow by the riverbank, and he cut them and fashioned them into a doll. And then a Nancy, he got lots of sticky, sticky honey, and he smeared the honey all over that doll, and he put a little hat on that doll with some beads around its neck, and late in the night, a Nancy went, taking his sticky doll into the forest and laid it down somewhere. Then he went away to hide, and as he was hiding... The moon came out, and the stars started to shine above. And Anansi could hear, he could feel something coming, moving. He could not see it, but he could just feel its presence. Then he heard some sweet, gentle voices saying, There's something here. Something in the woods. Hello. Why don't you answer me? Hello. And Nancy was listening. He could hear this faint voice, could not see what was happening, but he could hear what was being said. Why don't you greet me? Ashe, Asheo, Ashe. If you don't greet me, I'm going to hit you. And before he knew it, bam, he could see that the model, it moved. Ah, ah, 
I said the voice, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, it's sticky, I'm stuck. If you don't let me go, I'm gonna hit you again. Bam, the figure moved again. Ah, ah, said the voice, ah, why are you holding me? If you don't let me go, I'm gonna kick you. I don't want to, but I will. Ah! And once again, and Nancy could see that the figure, it moved again. And now the figure said, You got my hands, you got my leg, but I've got one more leg left. If you don't let me go, I'm going to kick you. I don't want to. Ah! And before you know it, once again, the figure now was stuck to the honey. Ah! I can't get out. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And before you know it, and Nancy knew he had something there. There was a forest spirit because his figure was moving around and around and around by itself. Something had hold of it. And Nancy had a large sack and he put that sticky doll into his sack. He threw his web up into the sky. The wind took it high into the heavens to the house of Naomi, the sky god. Naomi said, Anansi, did you bring for me that which you cannot see and that which you cannot touch? And Anansi said, yes, there inside the sack. And the sack, it was moving and it was rolling around. And Naomi was surprised that Anansi was able to catch something which you cannot see and something which you cannot touch. Naomi's hand went forth and said, and Nancy, you have done well. I will give you what you ask, Nancy. The stories are yours. And Nancy, he picked up that grand, beautiful, ancestral chest and he put that upon his back and Anansi threw down his gossamer thread towards earth and he started to make his way down his web. But the wind blew this way and that way, and Anansi was blown this way and that way. And before you know it, the chest upon Anansi's back, it slipped. And Anansi tried to catch it by the handle, but the lid flew open. And all the stories and all the wishes and all the dreams flew out. And they flew all over the world from one place to another. And Nancy, he grabbed as much as he could. He forced them back into the open-lidded chest, which he slammed down tight. Those stories, they became known as Nancy stories. And many stories are told of Anansi, the Spider-Man, and other stories. They flew out into the world and they fell where they lay. And so stories grew up from the ground. Maybe you will find a story and you will pick that story up and tell that story as I found this story to tell to you. And so my story of Anansi has ended. Crick, crack. Thanks very much to Toop for that story. And thank you for listening especially all our listeners in Nairobi. I wonder if you might find one of those stories lying on the ground. You could pick it up and learn to tell it. One of the best things about making this podcast is hearing from you. And lots of you have been inspiring us with your reviews and pictures. So, it's time to dig into our bag of happies and say some thank yous. Thanks to seven-year-old Dylan from Bristol who sent a terrifying picture of the wolf in the stick woman's story. The wolf has got red eyes and is sneaking up into the side of the picture. And Dylan drew it in spite of not feeling very well. So a special thanks for that, Dylan. 
and Tavi sent a magical picture of Firishka and the lock. She's shown the flooded palace and all the characters under the magical waters. Beautiful picture. Thanks, Tavi. And thanks for your voice message. And Bella has drawn a picture of Stickwoman and her daughter with all the animals who she encounters in the woods. And she's labelled all the animals. A lovely story map, Bella. Thank you. And Una, who is five, has sent a marvellous picture of Baba Yaga, the Russian witch, wearing marvellously witchy boots. I love the way both Baba Yaga and Vasilisa are screaming. Great writing to Una. Hurrah! And five-year-old Lucy from South Africa, who's now living in Australia, has sent a very imaginative picture of Firishka and the magic water story. She's drawn water and bright yellow stars all around the people from the palace. I wonder, Lucy, if those people dance under the stars at the bottom of the lake at night. And thanks to Aurora, who is four, from Warwick and has sent a lovely picture of the Laughing Prince. I love the way you've labelled the characters like the prince and his little sister. Really good writing, too. Very pleased to hear you've listened to all the stories, Aurora. That is super great. And Molly, from Newcastle in Australia, has drawn a super happy picture of Pip and the Moon Rabbit. I love little Pip who looks so small in your picture and it shows that the moon is really far away and yet they can still be friends. Thanks, Molly. And eight-year-old Sunny from London has drawn a really clever picture of Nora and the Aki fruit. I love the way, Sunny, you can just see Nora's head sticking out of the water and that she's making funny noises as the water gets higher and higher. Such a clear map of this story. Thank you, Sunny. And sisters Grace and Belle in Perth have sent two lovely pictures. Grace, I love your picture of Odon the giant and his house and all the little creatures who try to stop him from stomping on everyone. And Belle, thanks so much for your picture of Butterball and the ogre. I love Butterball's big round belly and all the different colours you've used. It's quite a scary story, isn't it? Glad you were brave enough to listen to that one. And Jameson, who's only three and a half, has also enjoyed listening to one of our scary stories. The one about the Russian witch, Baba Yaga. He's drawn a picture of her. Jameson, I love your Baba Yaga with her long, flowing hair. I'm glad you're enjoying listening to our stories. More thanks coming next week. I've been posting your pictures on our Facebook page if you'd like to see them. Go to facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. I'm sorry if yours isn't up there yet. We've had so many of you send in pictures, which is really wonderful and exciting. But it might take a little longer than usual to get everyone posted. Thanks to all of you who've been supporting us on Ko-fi and Apple and Patreon. Thanks to the Bodkin family, Dylan aged 7 and Fern aged 5 from Bristol. And to the Sills family in Santa Barbara, especially Harvey. And to Kate. And to Charlie and Imelda in Kildare in Ireland. We rely on your donations and subscriptions to keep producing Super Great Kids stories and to pay our storytellers. So if you'd like to support us, you can give a one-off payment on ko-fi.com forward slash Super Great Kids stories. Or you can subscribe on Patreon, which you'll find on our website at supergreatkidsstories.com or on Apple Podcasts. We've had some very kind reviews too. So... Thank you to Tiger in Australia and to Amelia in the UK and to Egg in the US and to Leah Grace, who's also in the US. Thank you all. I love reading your reviews. It really makes my heart leap. That's it for this week. Bye for now. More Trickster Tales next week. <laughs>